Now, the cost of living crisis continues to pinch people's pockets. Water bills have increased by an average of 1.7%. Gas and electricity costs have soared by an unbelievable 54%. And, of course, increased national insurance contribution mean individuals and businesses are seeing the state take more of their income too. Now, the British Retail Consortium has revealed that last month's shop prices increased at their fastest rate in more than a decade. Well, to talk through the cost of living crisis, I'm joined now by Conservative MP for Yeovil, Marcus Fish. Uh, welcome to the programme, Marcus. This is the most extraordinary time, it's fair to say, not just in the United Kingdom, but across the Western world as well. Uh, the government seems to admit that more could be done, uh, but many people are feeling that not enough is being done. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. It is true that we are providing uh, lots of money through rebates to uh, the uh, fuel bills, plus also council tax rebates and that sort of thing. But I would like to see us go further and offer, perhaps on a means-tested basis, or another way of making sure that uh, that this goes to the those most in need of it. I'd like to see rebates on the VAT on fuel and on fuel bills and also rebates on the green levies um, that are also added to those fuel bills. Because unless we get that base uh, fuel element of inflation down, uh, then it's very hard to see that not feeding through into prices in all sorts of areas uh, elsewhere through the economy. I suppose one of the big worries in this entire conversation is that inflationary trap. The Treasury is very concerned about uh, a looser uh, uh, fiscal policy whereby uh, more money is printed uh, and that potentially uh, exacerbates the problem. Is it your view, Marcus Fish, that this inflation is in part caused by the loose monetary policy that we've had over the last two years? I think undoubtedly the combination of more spending one way or another, and the supply chain bottlenecks that we've seen, um, both from the pandemic, but also in regards to energy, from the fact that there's just been massive underinvestment in energy sources over the last decade, particularly fossil fuels. Um, now, we all want, want to move to a sort of cleaner um, in, environment and have less impact on it. But the reality is that moving there is going to require a huge amount of materials that go into the, whether it's the copper wire for the grid or the concrete uh, for the windmills or um, all of the different types of aluminium and, and different things that are needed for uh, lower carbon and lower intensity modes of travel. Uh, these are things that take a lot of energy to produce in the meantime. And unless we've got a good supply of gas, gas, um, during that, that period, then we're going to see some, some of these prices rising very high. So I think we need to encourage investment to actually get more investment in those cleaner transition fuels like gas for the uh, time being, um, in addition to trying to reduce the actual prices of fuels that people experience through cutting some of these uh, VATs and other taxes that are on it. Yes, I suppose that investment will take time to filter through into having a more resilient uh, energy infrastructure. I, I, I wonder, Marcus Fish, in your opinion, did the Bank of England and the government get it wrong on inflation? Uh, over a year ago, people were saying that they weren't worried about inflation, that they didn't think that inflation would be coming down the track, not just in this country, but in America and in Europe as well. Uh, and yet we have been struck by the most extraordinary inflation that few people sitting in the places that make the decisions saw coming. Well, monetary policy is, of course, an independent matter here in the UK through the Bank of England, i.e. the Bank of England sets interest rates and the levels at which it intervenes in uh, in interest rate markets to try to set those rates. Um, but it is true that people did think it would be more transitory was the buzzword of this time last year uh, than it has turned out to be. Um, and um, that is the concern is that um, in the effort to uh, preserve our economy during the pandemic, there were obviously emergency measures undertaken. Um, and some of these numbers have been very, very, very big. And that, that liquidity is, is sort of washing through the markets. And a lot of people chose to bring forward purchases of goods 
uh, rather than purchases of services because going to restaurants wasn't as easy, going out, etc., wasn't as easy. Those sorts of service spending opportunities weren't available, and a lot of people um, decided to buy things. Now, I think it's it is quite possible actually, and you're seeing it starting to happen in terms of when businesses order inventory for the future to sell. There have been such shortages that a lot lot of them have got their orders in the pipeline. And now that things are starting to arrive, they actually uh, potentially don't see as much demand for those things another six months out. So it may well be that, in fact, uh, there is a natural uh, rolling off of some of these really nasty uh, levels of inflation right now. But I'm concerned that the overall price level itself won't really fall very much unless we are giving people more uh, more discounts in their fuel, for example. And that will, of course, also reduce the pressure that they feel to ask for a wage rise otherwise, which is the other way that it could get embedded in the system and then force the Bank of England to act in a way that um, that that might might turn the steering wheel too far in the other direction. Yes, yes, I see. So a, a rebate in that sense might actually avoid that sort of inflationary trap of, of higher, uh, of, of spiralling costs and, and, and wages. That's, that's an interesting point there. I'm afraid we've run to the end of the conversation there. But Marcus Fish, thank you so much for joining us on the briefing this morning Pleasure. and talking through what is probably the most important issue facing voters at the moment.